as a non-lawyer, I am more comf- comfortable with um, hypothetical scenarios rather than uh, what's in the law. So allow, please allow me to present another one, which I, uh, I guess is an extreme one, one that I hope uh, I will not see in my lifetime, but one that is interesting because it doesn't seem to fall within uh, those clearly defined categories uh, of uh, executive power that the president uh, is supposed to exercise, yet one where, as a citizen, I would actually hope that the president would come out uh, strongly, independently, and publicly. And the scenario would be, uh, is one of, say, um, uh, of rising ethnic tensions in Singapore. Uh, imagine a um, situation where the government of the day mishandles such rising tension, where uh, maybe because of a series of misstatements or missteps uh, by the executive, including by the prime minister, um, certain sections of the population actually begin to lose faith in the uh, judgment of cabinet. Uh, I, as a citizen, would actually expect and hope that in such a situation, um, an elected president (coughs) would see that it is part of his um, role as a unifying force uh, and as uh, someone who, who carries his reserve powers to actually come out before Singapore reaches the brink uh, and you know, with words of, uh, of comfort and wisdom and patience, uh, tell people to calm down. Uh, I'm, I think back to the situation in 1992 in Thailand where the Thai king actually called the uh, politicians uh, to the palace and chided them in front of uh, the cameras. Um, is that unrealistic? Would, that be, you know, would, would we still insist that the president uh, plays his unifying role in as silent a way as other unifying symbols like the flag and the merlion, <laughs> or, or uh, would, would it be the proper thing for him to do to actually uh, come out rather than seek the advice of a government that has already mishandled the situation yes. and independently bring his wisdom to bear on okay. such a situation? Thank you, Thank you Jaren. Um, Minister? Jaren, I think uh, you know, your question exposes a nub of the angst that many people feel. It starts with a concern that the government could go wrong. And I agree, any government can go wrong. Let's start with that. But in any democratic system, those are among the risks that you take with any government, whether the PAP government or some other government or a coalition government or in this country or any country. Governments can make mistakes. They can sometimes seriously mishandle. And that is why you have elections. And the only remedy really is to rectify that during elections. What you're hoping for, oh, we have uh, elections through a president and he can somehow calm things down. Our model is not the Thai monarchy. Our model, as I traced for you, is the English monarchy and its conventions, and even more limited than the English monarchy. And you have never seen an English queen have the two opposition, the prime minister and the opposition, crawling on their knees in front of her. That's not the model. The hypothetical that you're talking about, if the president spoke up in that situation, he would be acting completely unconstitutionally. Let, let that me, is not the role let me, for the president. Let, let me give you an example closer to home. Right. Yeah? Um, a few weeks ago, um, His Majesty the Agong of Malaysia um, invited Prime Minister Najib and uh, the leader of an NGO called Bursi to call on His Majesty in his uh, palace in order to head off what he saw was likely to be a confrontation that will bring disorder, chaos to Kuala Lumpur. Um, the Agong tried to make peace by suggesting that, by persuading the Berse not to have uh, an outdoor demonstration but to have it in a stadium. And he tried to persuade the Prime Minister of Malaysia to agree to give a permit to let Berse hold their demonstration in a stadium. Um, I'm, I'm not actually sure whether under the Constitution of Malaysia, the Agong has the power to do this, you know, but this is just acting in its good offices. Is, if we were to face such a situation in Singapore, is that an inappropriate exercise of uh, the good offices of the President? I, I would distinguish the situations in this way, Prof. I think in the first place, when the Agong asked uh, Ambika Srinivasan to come over, the press reports we read suggest that uh, it was actually with the consent 
and at the request of the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. And the Prime Minister actually approached the President in Singapore or the Agong in Malaysia, the Agong would be entirely acting within his rights to then have a conversation with somebody else. Uh, can he of his own volition invite people over and give them advice? My own view would be if it is kept out of the public view and he talks to them privately, it should be possible, but, but I will read a passage from Bob Danau for you okay. to show you how strict the rules are. Mm. This is the same Bogdanov that I referred to, yeah. on expert on parliamentary affairs. He says it, it sets out all the principles, and then he says, the consequences of this fundamental principle about the sovereign not engaging in publicly with the government were drawn out by the constitutional lawyer, Sir William Manson, in his authoritative work, The Law and Custom of the Constitution, and first published in 1892 as first, that she should not take advice from others in matters of state, unknown to them. Next, that she should not give public expression to opinions on matters of state without consulting them. Them here means cabinet. And lastly, that she should accept the advice when offered by them as a cabinet and support them while they remain her servants. The first principle that the sovereign should not take advice from others without the knowledge of her ministers requires her not to consult other politicians without the approval of her prime minister. So I think one has got to be careful here. I think uh, one can say you can probably, there is a gray area where the president invites both sides and talks to them, mm -hmm. provided he doesn't get embroiled. Right. But really, every political step the president takes, whether he wants to meet with the opposition members of parliament, as in England, mm -hmm. should be with the advice of the prime minister.